Okay, planning. Oh, this is the next section of the class. So the first section of the class was on search. The next section of the class was on knowledge representation and logic. And this section of the class is on planning. We're going to start by talking about deterministic planning, single agent, fully observable world. Uh, it's a lot like what you did for assignment one. Except assignment one, it gets a planner. But is it really AI? You know, you encoded the heuristic. You told it that there were dirty places, all this stuff. Like you programmed a lot of stuff in. If it's really AI, then shouldn't you just be able to tell it about the problem and it figures it out? So that's what that's that's also called domain independent planning. So that's what you're writing for assignment three is a planner that takes a certain kind of input language that describes the domain and automatically derives a heuristic and then plans. This is called domain independent planning. This is what we're going to talk about now in this part of the class. There are a zillion different, and for short, since domain independent planning is kind of long, I usually just say planning. Um, and for just like A star, like assignment one stuff, I just call that search, even though that is a kind of a planning, but it's a very domain dependent planning. So there are a zillion kinds of planning problems. Like these are just some of the ways in which planning problems can vary. You can have either serial plans or parallel plans. This is like where you have one action after another and parallel is much more like real life where you're doing multiple things at the same time. Um, I think the grad students have to do parallel planning for this next assignment, but everyone else is just doing serial planning. Um, are the actions all the same duration or do they vary? Like, I don't know about your life, but in my life, things take very different amounts of time. You know, uh, yeah. Beating a student takes a very small amount of time. Checking my email takes a very long amount of time. Um, cost. If it's not just time, but if there are costs, beating students is very cheap. Um, buying a new computer, very expensive, right? Or you can think about it as taking the bus or taking a cab if you don't like violence. Um, the, there could be all kinds of different objectives. So for most of, we're, we're going to be mostly minimizing cost, which is usually the cost of a plan is the sum of the costs of the actions in the plan. But sometimes people want to optimize make span. And make span is like from the start of the plan to the end of the plan. And if you have a parallel plan, then there could be a zillion actions going on and if you're just optimizing the make span, you don't care how expensive those actions are or how many of them are happening in parallel. You just want that thing done as soon as possible. So, you know, the U.S. military cares about make span. You know, how fast can we get out of Iraq? Like, from the beginning to the end, boom. Like, uh, if it takes a zillion transports to move everyone out in parallel, that's fine. How fast can we do it? Um, I'll tell you, the search space when you're searching for make span is is killer because if, let's say I have a partial plan and I'm considering more actions to add to the plan. Unless you happen to add an action after the last action, if, you, if the action is anywhere else, it doesn't affect the make span at all. <laughs> so, the, so like all these plans look the same as far as cost goes because they don't, the different actions don't affect the make span at all. So it's very challenging to make a plan for make span. Um, sometimes you just care about logical states of affairs, like is A on B. Sometimes you care about metric things, like what's the battery level that we're at now? What's the fuel level? Uh, there were some folks down at CMU built a robot to go look for meteorites in Antarctica. And the planner for that, like, it, they had to choose paths for the robot to go on. The, um, it had this big solar panel, but the solar panel could only had one joint, not two. So they always had to move the robot so that uh, the panel was facing the sun at any time. So the, the robot would make these giant arcs during the day um, so that it was always uh, pointed towards the sun. 